welcome to Daniel Woman. I'm your host, Samantha Stone, and we have lots of things to talk about today, things that are happening across the city. Um, we'll be meeting with another city councilor and catching up on what's been happening there. And we also are going to talk about a problem that we have across the city. We talk a lot about um, our unfriendly rodents that none of us want and some of the challenges of getting rid of them in a safe way. So we'll we'll chat about that at the end of our conversation here today. As always, welcome Mayor Concanon. Hi, Samantha. How are you? I'm good. I'm really glad to be chatting with you today. Um, we have uh, gotten some you know, news in terms of the shelter families that have newer to our community um, in terms of work permits and things. And I thought this was a good opportunity for us to give an update to the community. Sure. Yeah. So there's there's been some good news. As we know, uh, one of the main goals of this whole operation as we're welcoming these newer families into Woburn is to try to get them to a position where they can be in more permanent housing and become more active members of our community. And the best way to do that is with a job. And one of the biggest obstacles to getting there was the lack of work permits. And the good news is the state in working with the federal government has been uh, working very hard to get to the point where newer migrants can get their work permits. And there's been a recent initiative that led to some of our families actually receiving their permits. So we have some new members of our Wuben community who are actively seeking employment and authorized to do so. So we're just asking uh, any of our audience, anyone in the city who's in a position to hire somebody to please consider these folks because they are eager to work, they're eager to contribute, they wanna be active participating members of our community. And we'd, uh, we'd like to see a connection made between those wanting to work and those needing workers. <clears throat> so if there's anybody out there listening, uh, who might have the opportunity to hire somebody. If you could please reach out for now, if you could reach out to Samantha here in our office, uh, she can put them in touch with the uh, the people running the housing operation and uh, we can make that connection and get some people some jobs. Yeah, thank you for that. That is that is certainly good news. Um, and, you know, occasionally people stop by the office in general who are doing job seeking. We don't have like a structured job board or anything, but it's always good to know who's hiring because um, we can direct folks who are visiting us in general there as well. Yep. So this is a busy week for our city clerks. We have the presidential primary on Tuesday. Right. That kind of came up quick on us. You know, when I created the graphic with all the dates for early voting, it felt like forever ago. And uh, all of a sudden we're here on, on election day. Yeah. And I know that uh, city clerk Lindsay Higgins and her team have been working very hard for the last several weeks getting ready for this. Uh, voting day is tomorrow. There has been some early voting. And of course, there's always absentee balloting. But tomorrow is the big day when all the folks in Woburn head out to the polling locations and cast their vote. Uh, most of them, as we know, are in the schools, and uh, school is actually in session for this presidential primary election day. Uh, we are, we're hoping for a cooperative effort and that the people who show up to vote uh, basically just go in, cast the vote, and leave so there's little to no disruption to our schools so that the kids can get the, uh, the educational value of a full school day. Uh, but I expect everything will go well. Obviously, there'll be poll workers, and there'll be police officers at every location. Uh, and one of their tasks will be to minimize any interactions uh, between voters and students to allow uh, a traditional regular school day to occur and for people to exercise their sacred right to vote. Yeah, thank you for that. We know how hard uh, everybody works to, to make these days happen and appreciate the schools and the cooperation that will happen there as well. Yeah. And if anybody has any questions on where they vote, they can check the city website. There's all sorts of information on the primary, including checking their voting status and checking which uh, precinct, which voting location they should be going to. Uh, it's pretty, pretty user friendly on the city website. They should find everything they need right there. Yeah, it's really easy. You put in your name and address and all kinds of really useful, very specific information pops up. So I encourage people to do that for sure. Um, there was an article in the Times about 
um, trash and recycling. Um, we know that we are very early in the process of negotiating our uh, contract with waste management, which is our current provider. Um, I thought there'd be an opportunity to just talk a little bit about the things you're keeping in mind um, as yep. we're trying to balance <laughs> cost with service and the and the things that we will deliver. And also just to remind people, you know, this is the contract is up for renewal. It's not like we're um, specifically going after waste management to negotiate. This is the time that we would normally be doing this. Right. Right. And to your point, it is all about the balance between the level of service we can get versus the cost we have to pay. There's that delicate balance. Wuben has historically been very uh, generous in its trash pickup. We hope to maintain that. Uh, there's also a desire for more recycling efforts. I know more and more uh, of our residents every week are putting out more and more recyclables, which we encourage and we like to see. Uh, it might be to the point where, you know, we're getting close to 50-50 which might warrant a weekly recycling pickup. So th that's certainly something we're looking at. Uh, we're also looking at other initiatives around yard waste. Um, one of the considerations that has been kicked around, and to your point, this is all preliminary. This is just discussion. At the town hall meeting we had, there was a question and we, we threw out there the various considerations, none of which have been decided um, just to try to generate some community discussion about what the people might want to see. And one of those was moving towards the approach that many of our neighbors have taken, where we issue particular receptacles for trash and recycling, and those are the receptacles you use. And of course, the savings there is that the, uh, the truck that goes around and picks up those barrels uh, doesn't require as much staffing, as much labor because it's all you know, done by the truck. It reaches out with an arm and picks up the bucket and empties it and puts it back down on the ground. In order to do that, you need a particular type of bucket that has to be provided. Of course, there's cost to that. So we have to weigh those costs and we have to weigh, again, whether Wuben is ready for that. Are we at that point? Um, and those are all the things that are on the table. I'm glad to see the discussion is happening. I've seen some comments and, and discussion and debate on Facebook, which is great that people are talking about it. And at the end of the day, we'll make a decision based on what we believe the community wants and needs balanced up against those costs and try to make a decision that's in the best interest of the city. Thank you. Do you have any sense yet about when those discussions are likely to come to fruition where we'll have it? It's, it's quite a while out if I recall correctly. <laughs> We're probably looking at a, a two to three months before we've finalized all of this. We're having some more internal conversations and then we'll meet again and talk about um, the process of putting it back out there and seeing what, uh, you know, what the providers may be willing to, to offer for service and what that might look like for cost. Great. Thank you. Um, we, in addition to all the regular city business that happens, this is sort of read across America week. And so you've had the pleasure of going to a couple of, at least one school tomorrow will be at the Y um, yep. reading. And I know you have a favorite book that you'd like to take with you when that's possible. Tell us a little bit about that book and why you love it so much. Sure. So over the last 10 years or so, even before that, actually, when I was, when I was on the state police, I did a little bit of this uh, when I could reading across America. Generally speaking, I was going into the, the lower level elementary schools and there was an audience there that was very receptive to one of my favorite books, which is Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCloskey. Uh, it's a classic. I think it's a one of the award-winning books. Um, the reason I like it so much, not only because it's a great story and the little kids love it, but because it's about a police officer named Michael who lives near the Boston area who helps out a bunch of ducks. And that hits home with me because I was a police officer near the Boston area. Obviously, I'm Michael, and I like to help people. Uh, I'll help ducks, too, if, if the need arises. Uh, and, and I'll tell you that the, the little kids love it. Um, they love the, you know, the jack, cack, lack, mac, whack, the whole thing, and the, the repetitiveness of, of the story. And the happy ending, of course, when all the police officers stop traffic to allow the kids uh, the ducks to cross the road. And I hope I'm not giving away the ending to anyone who hasn't read the book. 
all those four uh, and five year olds who are watching are going to be disappointed. They'll, they'll yeah. love to hear it. We all know when kids have a favorite book they love, they like to hear it over and over and over again, often True. to our um, challenge, oh, yeah. right? Well, the other, <laughs> the other book that everyone's probably heard of is Good Night Moon, which I probably read 4,000 times easily. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I like that book, uh, Make Way for Ducklings, and it's been a big hit. I am facing a bit of a challenge. I think I'm going to a fourth grade class later this week. So I've asked for some help from that classroom teacher to help me find a more appropriate book, because I'm not so sure those kids would like the duckling book. But if I had to pick a favorite, it would definitely be that one. I, I love it. Uh, it is a really wonderful story and um, great. And whenever you sort of personally identify with the story, I think it always comes across clearly yeah. in, in the reading as well. Um, before I let you go, the last thing I wanted to talk about is um, the rec department has announced our citywide yard sale that's happening um, in May. Um, and I yep. just wanted to give you a moment to talk about what happens next. Yeah, so that will be on Saturday, May 4th. And there is a sign up process. Uh, the Recreation Department runs that. Uh, Director Rory Lindstrom has been doing it for many years now. There's a form you can fill out, again, on our city website. If you, You'll see the tab on the homepage for the yard sale. Um, and hopefully we get you know dozens of locations across the city where people get to do a little bit of spring cleaning and somebody else finds a new treasure that, uh, that they take home and, and they enjoy. Um, I know in, in years past, there's been a tremendous interest in this program. And, you know, hopefully it's a nice, warm, sunny Saturday. And, and again, everybody can go out and find a treasure. Uh, we've we participated to a certain extent years and years ago. We haven't done it lately. Uh, we'll see whether, you know, my family does it this year or not. But I'd love to see yard sales across the city. Again, all the information is on our website. Uh, it's pretty easy to navigate. And any questions, you can call the recreation office or send Rory Lindstrom an email here. At, um, it would be rlindstrom at cityofwoburn.com. And uh, I'm sure she'll be glad to navigate through the process. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, before we jump to our next guest, I'm actually going to share my screen because I want to... Uh, so many of you know, we've mentioned this very briefly, that Kindness Day is coming up with this which is March 20th in the city. And we're very excited to have so many amazing partners with us. I just wanted to show you where you can get the full schedule of public events. So if you go to woburnmass.gov slash woburncares um, and you scroll down the page, there's a huge list of all different kinds of activities that are happening. There's things like dropping off donations of food to the fire stations. We'll be doing a proclamation reading. You can do a sing-along in the senior center. Uh, the library has an amazing set of programs that are happening throughout the day. Um, there's things happening in the Boys and Girls Club. You can make cards at the YMCA to thank veterans and other important groups in our community. There's just a whole host of stuff that you can come here. In addition, there is activities that are happening by individual groups that are not on the schedule, but you might participate in if you have a Boy Scout or a Girl Scout who are doing some interesting things as well. I, of course, want to thank our amazing set of partners that are participating in the program with us. There's just been so much going on, and we're so appreciative of that. So again, um, I encourage you to go check out the schedule of events. Um, it's available on our website. You can get to it from this URL. You can also, if you're just on the city's homepage and you're not sure how to find it, if you go to events and you scroll down to our date here you can click on kindness day and from there that'll link you to the schedule and this is the page that i previously showed you so i hope that you will find a way either through some of these events or in your own way just doing an extra kindness to make someone smile across the city together i know we can make kindness contagious on march 20th love to welcome city council rob toro welcome rob thanks samantha thanks for having me I'm always glad to see you. You've been in the your position officially for a few weeks now. Um, anything surprised you? What have you learned? Um, no surprises. You know, it's definitely taken some time to get used to and navigate how things are done and who to reach out to in order to get things accomplished. Um, it's been a learning process, uh, starting to get a hold of it. And uh, I've met some great people along the way and 
been able to have been, you know, been fortunate enough to help some people as well. So that's wonderful. What are some of the most common concerns or opportunities that have been coming to you now that you've been in this position? Sure. Some of the same concerns that I dealt with or heard during the campaign, um, you know, traffic within the city is a big one. Um, that's inevitable with the city growing and um, the construction and it just being as desirable as it is, you know, people want to come live here, which inevitably brings traffic. Um, that's one. I've had some questions about the upcoming budget and how that's going to be handled. Um, you know, is it going to be an open dialogue? Are people going to be notified of different things? You know, so I, people are concerned with the potential budget. Um, and, and there's also other, other things, um, individual issues or requests or concerns. But I'd say traffic in the budget were two things in the first six to eight weeks that I've heard mostly. Yeah, thank you. Um, I know you've been hosting office hours. Before I let you go, when, when are your next ones? Where and when? Sure. So it will be, let me just confirm that. I think it's next. I haven't posted it yet, but it's going to be next Wednesday, um, <clears throat> the 13th from 1130 to one, most likely going to be at Studio Cafe. Um, and then later in the month, uh, I will hold another one, which will be, you know, after work hours or, or closer to that time to try to capture some people that can't come during the day. Right. So my goal is to host two a month, one during the day at studio or somewhere like that, and then one towards the end of the day at the end of the month um, to give people the opportunity to come that couldn't originally make it for the um, early morning sessions or the early afternoon sessions. Well, thank you so much for making yourself accessible to the community. I know people are, appreciate that. And uh, we'll touch base in a few weeks and see what else is new. Sure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Before we wrap up today, I want to welcome Jim Joyce. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Samantha. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad. And for those who've watched the show for a while, they know um, of your work with Friends of Horn Pond and now also as an active member of our conservation committee, which we're super excited about. Oh, I'm very excited about that. I, uh, I'm, uh, I, I couldn't be happy to be a member of that of the conservation commission. Um, and just, uh, just real quick, I mean, in the two months that I've been, not even that, month and a half. I've learned more than I ever figured I was going to learn in that brief period of time. And I just went out to a uh, the annual conference of conservation commissioners, and uh, uh, it was another great networking and learning experience. So, uh, so it's it's great for it's great for me personally, and and I I'm really enjoying uh, you know being a contributor to the city. Well, we're, you're the perfect person for it um, because of your passion and your expertise and your interests. So we, we're so grateful for it. Um, today, we're going to talk about a very specific research project. So Friends of Horn Pond is always um, certainly about appreciating the, the beauty that we have in our community, but also protecting it. And you have a, a rodent research project that's happening around bait stations. Tell us about that. So we do, thanks. And so the, the, the bait station project is uh, in partnership with Earthwise Aware, and that's the biodiversity and climate group um, out of Somerville. It's a nonprofit. It does a, a, a quite a considerable amount of work out at Horn Pond, uh, looking both at plant uh, phenology and insect growth, invasive plant species. So they launched a a project called the SCAR Brigade. It, it stands for second generation anticoagulant rodenticides. And, and they asked us to partner with it because we had been doing quite a bit of work with um, some of the local rehabbers that were intaking birds of prey and mammals. So specifically hawks, owls, coyotes, foxes that all were suffering either sick or had died from anticoagulant rodenticide poisoning. So we'd been doing it for about, about a year and we'd gone out in the field, um, located, we, we took injured or dead or sick animals, found out where they were. We knew what they had been you know, sick or died from. And we went out and actually put boots on the ground to locate and to, to map out where the bait stations were located that had those same active ingredients. And so we'd been doing it for quite a while and we had a, a, a pretty good reasonable amount of success. 
So Earthwise Aware contacted us to see if we wanted to partner with them. They have launched a complete project with web-based tools, mobile application that folks can actually go out. It's a participatory science project. Folks can go out in the field. They can log their bait stations in. If the labels are on the bait station, they can log the materials in. And we can also log in sick or dead animals or birds that we know have died from, from anticoagulant rodenticide poisoning. And the whole goal is to look at the correlation between the, the, the animals and the bait stations and the materials and be able to make that information public so that any community, any municipality, any organization can use that data and that information to make informed decisions for how they want their, their municipality to proceed. If, if, they, if they want to uh, transition from something other than an anticoagulant, they can most certainly do so. And, and we've also highlighted where some sanitation, waste management, exclusion processes would really help in curbing the amount of uh, anticoagulants that are used in the in in the in the environment and in our communities. Um, where can people, if people want to participate in that research, where can they go to get information to download the right apps and you know plug in their information in the right places? Yeah, so all the information that all the information is out there. They can go to earthwiseaware.org. And they can get it right from there. There's also a, um, you know, we've got a complete list of uh, these websites are on our um, on our Facebook group as well. But um, that's where they can go to, to, to participate in that. Uh, as I said, it's open to the public. Right now, we have 78 members from the greater Boston area. We have some on the South Shore. We have some on the North Shore. And we're directly connected to some of the, well, the, the, we're directly connected to the migratory bird rehabbers on the North and the South shore. And we're connected to the mammal rehabbers too. So Newhouse Wildlife Rescue, Cape Ann Wildlife, we're, we're directly connected uh, to those folks. Yeah. So we know when the animals are coming in, we know when the birds are coming in and uh, you know people can log those in as well, but that's, that's how you get to that. Thank you. You know, it also affects even sort of our pets. We had, uh, you know, our Probably. puppy the other day is fine. He's not hurt, yeah. we, you know, we're fortunate, but you know, he was out playing and grabbed a mouse and was, you know, not not the not kindest to the mouse, perhaps. But, um, you know, everything turned out fine. But had that mouse been sick, you know, it is possible that the dog would have ingested something as well. So yeah. we uh, we do want to keep that in mind. Now, nope. You know, as kind as we might want to be to rodents, they are really annoying when they're in their house. We don't want rats right. and we don't want mice and they do wreak havoc. And, and especially here in New England in the winter, they they tend to come inside. So what might people use as an alternative to the um, bait stations that we've all become very used to using? Yeah, so so it's a great question. And 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 so really, when you think about when you think about a rodent, it's a mammal. It's intelligent. And it's looking for three things. It's looking for food, water, and shelter is what it wants. So if you want to keep them off your property or you want to keep them out of your house, there are certainly some measures that 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 residents and businesses can take that are pretty common sense. So minimize the food sources. So how do you do that? Well, it's it's very much as as Mayor Ken Cannon said, with waste management, proper trash receptacles minimize the amount of overflowing trash that you have, um, use good metal containers with, with closed lids so that that trash is con is contained. Uh, it's the same thing with dumpsters, make sure that they're not overflowing. So that's, that's the business side of it. And if you want to keep them out of your house, once it's, it's relatively easy to find out where they go in. If you think about this, a mouse can go into a hole or into a slot about the size of a dime. And a rat can go into one the size of a quarter. So if you go around your business or you go around your home and you look at your foundation or where those entry points are, you can seal all those entry points off. And so you can at least keep them so that they're not they're not getting into your house. So the, the big thing is seal off your seal off the holes in your foundations or any of these points of entry into your home. 
Businesses can put door sweepers on their doors to keep them from coming underneath the doors. Same thing with their with their with their businesses as well and their foundations. So it's really the, the exclusion processes that are that are provided that you can do yourself. And there's there's plenty of there's companies out there that do it. They can be a big a big help. And and also remember, you know these bait stations. So the bait station doesn't kill anything. The bait station just holds something, right? It all depends on what you put in it. And there are plenty of alternatives to the anticoagulants that you can put in those bait stations. You can put in snap traps in those bait stations. You can put in non-toxic baits that what they that will dehydrate the mammal. You could put in a vitamin D, which is a rodenticide, but it does the same thing. It will dehydrate. And the thing with these is they don't bioaccumulate into the, they don't bioaccumulate and they have short half-lives. So the impact to the rodent eating species, the owls, the hawks, the eagles, the coyotes, the foxes, those risks to them are, are significantly mitigated when you go to these types of measures. Now they can, they can thrive off the, off the rodents that are out in the, that are out in the wild or out, you know, in the field. That's what they're supposed to be doing. And, and if we do our part to kind of, con, you know, to contain, you know, to kind of secure our homes and, and, our, and, and our trash and do that, do our part, uh, I think we'll be much better off. And, and, and if you think about it from a cost perspective, you're, you're not talking about much difference in cost between going to a vitamin D application, if you will, than if you were using an anticoagulant rodenticide. The impact to the to the wildlife, children, and pets is far greater with the anticoagulant. Thank, thank you, Jim, for You're for welcome. sharing that. I, you know, we did have a lot of mice in my house this year for some reason. I'm not oh. quite sure what why. Um, we found some success with glue traps, which I know were not always the most pleasant experience, but um, they did they did end up helping us. So, um, you know, thank you for sharing and educating us about what we can do as alternatives and reminding us of the dangers of some of the um, poisons that are currently fairly commonly used. And, uh, Samantha, just I just want to add one thing on on something else that has been done and it's widely being used. And that's the dry ice application, which is a CO2 application. And that's used in conjunction with snap traps. And there are communities across greater Boston that are starting to go in that direction. And, and personally, when, when I have some Norway rats that, that kind of come along and I find burrows, I use that I use that myself. It's not something that you need to have anybody do. You can you can buy the material and it's it's available. So that's a very effective way to uh, to do that. Well, I'm going to have to go educate myself about that. So thank you for bringing that You're up. Welcome. And Woburn, as always, please continue to take good care of each other. Music